Welcome back into our class TH110 and we're studying on the doctrine of this Bible and right now we're under the doctrine of the church. The doctrine of the church and today we arrive at the 13th sub doctrine under the doctrine of the church and this one is about tithing. Tithing, tithing and we're going to read our Bibles in the book of Malachi. So please open your Bibles in the book of Malachi and I want to welcome the pastors from the 20 countries and we have many, many languages and I'm teaching out of the NASB version of the Bible, the English, the New American Standard, so just follow along and we've already responded to all of your questions individually and now we're going to take this big question and we're going to allow this one to drive our, drive our mini lessons here today. So open your Bibles to the book of Malachi and this is the last book of the Old Testament and I want you to look at a few verses here. Let's start with verse 8. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. I repeat, Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. And we're going to read down to verse 12. And read, look, follow along with me. It says, Will a man rob God, yet you are robbing me? But you say, Have, you, we, have we robbed you in tithes and offerings? You are, you are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, so that they may be food in my house, and test me now in, in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Then I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that I will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. All the nations will call you blessed. For you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Now, what I like to do here is I want to focus in uh, on verse 10. So let's focus in on verse 10. And I also want you to understand the context. Now, in order to understand the idea, the concept of tithing, okay, you have to remember that this comes from the Old Testament. It was under the it was under the under the uh, uh, under the Ju system of Judaism because Judaism was a theocracy. It was a government run by God, a theocracy, a theocracy in which the religion was basically there were the government officials. So that's the context of Malachi. And, I, and which, the other part of the Malachi is that they were unfaithful and God rebuked them and called them back to test them and try him. So let's go back to verse 10. He says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now in this says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. So I, I have to ask you a question here. Who was he, who was God speaking to? He Was he speaking to Gentiles? No. Was he speaking to us? No. He was speaking to whom? To whom was he speaking? He was speaking to Israel, the nation of Israel, the Hebrews. Okay? And so let's just give a very brief explanation, okay, about tithing. So tithing is the practice that we know as giving of 10% of one's income to the Lord. That's, that's, the, that's the, simplest, it's the simplest definition that I can come up with. Okay? It's the practice of giving 10% of one's income to the Lord. Now, it is called storehouse tithing. or That's how it was known for many, many years. It's called storehouse tithing. Okay, By some who require that the tithe be given to the Lord through the local church. So storehouse tithing was a familiar term for many, many, many years, and it, it implied strongly, and it was a direct, it was a direct uh, reference to people bringing their tithe to the local church. Now let's see if we can illustrate this some more. Okay. Now while some, now while some Christians disagree, okay, the principle of God's place for worship is the basis for the storehouse tithing. That's very clear. And you know where we draw this out of? We draw this out of the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 12. Okay? Now, the temple in the Old Testament, I think there was three things here. And the temple in the Old Testament, okay, was the central place characterized by, it was characterized by God's presence. So that's, so this was, this was the central location that was characterized by God's presence. So this is where people went to worship and give this tithe. Secondly, okay, it, it, it possessed the symbols of redemption. It possessed the symbols of redemption, this locale. Okay? And thirdly, where was the man of God? Where was the man of God served? Where was it that he was served? He was served in the temple. Okay. So now, if you understand that, now let's go to the extreme, to the other side, and let's go to the New Testament. Okay, 
Now, in the New Testament, these three attributes, okay, was a central place characterized by God, um, it, it possessed the symbols of redemption, and, and where it was where the man of God served, okay? And if we take these three attributes uh, that characterize the local church, right? Hence, the principle of storehouse tithing continues in the church age, according to many, many, many people. And, and I want you to understand something. There's a lot of disagreement to this. Hmm? So, but, but we're going to come back to that. Now, how would we take something like this and apply? What, what would be the application of this? Okay. Well, some people withhold their tithe. Some people, now, they say they believe in tithing, but then they withhold their tithe. Okay? They, some people withhold their tithe from their local church because, because they disagree with the expenditure of the funds. Okay? How the church decided to expend the funds, okay, they disagree. Now, if you believe in tithing, okay, that's clearly not one of the biblical reasons for not to tithe. You need to go and address the issue of why they're spending the money the way they're spending it. Okay? But you can't withhold it, but people do this all the time. Okay? Now, these kind of Christians, these Christians should join another church where they can wholeheartedly make their contributions in good conscience. If this is where they're at, okay? And I've come across many, many of them, and you can't convince them otherwise, okay? But because, of, listen, but because of our actual tithe, listen to me carefully, because our actual tithe belongs to, it belongs to the local church. So giving to parachurch ministries, parachurch organizations should be in addition to the tithe, okay? You know, you don't send your tithe to a parachurch ministry. Okay? You give an offering to a parachurch ministry. You don't send your tithe to the missionary. You send, you give your tithe to the church if you believe in tithe. That's if you believe in tithing, okay? And you send an offering to the missions. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, you, you we need to have a divine order of how things should be done. Turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis, chapter 14, verse 20. And in Genesis, chapter 14, verse 20, it says, And blessed be the God most high, who was delivered, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. He gave him a tenth of all. So we're beginning to see before even the law was established, okay, even the law, of, before the law of Moses, okay, and we see before the Ten Commandments were given, that the idea, the concept of a tithe was already operational in the Old Testament before anything happened. Okay? So we can clearly see that. Now go back to the book of Malachi chapter 3, and we read this in verse 10, remember that? And we said this, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, and test me now in this says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Now, remember when, when Jesus was addressing the issue with, with the Pharisees. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, turn your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. And in Matthew chapter 22, I want you to see this in verse 21. Matthew twenty two twenty one, 21. And it says, They said to him, Caesar's, then he said to them, Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Okay, that are God's. And here's the thing you find interesting. That nowhere in the New Testament, from Matthew to Revelation, Revelation back to Matthew, we do not find a command to tithe. Now, we don't find a command that says not to tithe either. Okay? I want to be very careful about this, okay? But the biblical principle that overrides, that dominates the New Testament is called giving. Giving, okay? So we're going to come to this question. Here's the big question that I want to, uh, I want to kind of work through. And that is, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about Christian tithing? Because remember, everything in the Old Testament was not Christian tithing. It was Hebrew tithing. It was Jewish tithing. It was tithing in Jew in um, in 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 um, in Judaism. That's what it was, okay? because we don't see any Christians in the Old Testament. We see it in the New Testament after the birth of the church in the Book of Acts. Remember that? Okay. So now, so many Christians today they struggle with the issue of tithing. Okay, in some churches, giving is way over emphasized. I mean, you go to every church service, every prayer meeting, and they got their hands out, and they're raising and they're raising an offering all the time. Something is wrong there. Okay. At the same time, many Christians refuse to submit to the biblical exhortations about making offerings 
to the Lord. So tithing slash giving is intended to be a joy and a blessing. That's what it's intended to be. Sadly, many times this is not the case in the church today. Now, the title, okay, um, no, I'm sorry, the tithe, the tithe. The tithe is an Old Testament concept. The tithe is an Old Testament concept, okay? Now, the tithe was the requirement of the law in which the Israelites were to give 10% of the crops that they grew and livestock they raised to the tabernacle, to the temple. That was the law. This is an Old Testament concept. Let me show you this. Open your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 27. And I want you to see this in Leviticus chapter 27 and, da- and go down to verse 30. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. Look at this. Let's turn your Bibles. I'm sorry, I'm in Numbers. Uh, Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 says this. Now all the tithe of the land, of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. So we have an Old Testament law that says 10% of everything belongs to God. Hmm? Now go back to the book of Numbers and go to Numbers chapter 18. And in Numbers chapter 18, I want you to see this in verse 26. Numbers 18, 26 says, Moreover, you shall speak to the to the Levites and say to them, When you take from the sons of Israel the tithe, which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then you shall present an offering from it to the Lord, a tithe of the tithe. So under this system, okay, the Levites would receive a tithe from everybody, but they were required to tithe as well. Hmm? Uh, how many people actually do that? How many preachers do that? For, the, for those of you who believe in tithing and you demand it from your congregation, well, how many of you are actually doing it? Okay? Now turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 14. And go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 14. And let's turn to verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 24. And it says, But if the distance is so great for you that you are not able to bring the tithe, since the place where the Lord your God chooses to set his name is too far away from you when the Lord your God blesses you. Okay, So we know that they had to deal with these issues. Okay? Sometimes they were traveling, okay, and they but they were still required to give the tithe. Now go to Second Chronicles chapter thirty-one. Second Chronicles chapter thirty-one, and look at verse five. Now I realize that we're taking these verses out of their context, but I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do is to bring is to give you a highlighted issue, a highlighted point, a salient point to drive the point home. And here in Second Chronicles chapter thirty-one, verse five, it says this. And as soon as the order spread, the sons of Israel abundantly provided the first fruits of grain, new wine, oil, honey, and all of the produce of the field. And they brought in, they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. So you can see that this is an Old Testament concept clearly laid out. In fact, the Old Testament law required, and, and, and let, me, let me take you a bit further. The Old Testament law required multiple tithes, plural, multiple tithes. One for the Levites, one for the use in the temple, one for the for the use for the feast, and one for the poor of the land. And you know, which would have pushed the total somewhere, depending on which which um, Hebrew scholar you're talking to. Okay, so the minimum of tithe was actually twenty three percent between twenty three and twenty seven percent. That would be the actual complete tithe if you participated in everything. Right? And so some understand that the Old Testament tithe as a method, it was a method of taxation. The Old Testament, the Old Testament tithe was a method of taxation to the provide for the needs of the priests and the Levites in the sacrificial system. That's how they understand it. Okay? Now, after the death of Jesus Christ, this is where this is about to turn. This is, we're about to make a major turn here. After the death of Jesus Christ, okay, fulfilled the law, because when Jesus died, he fulfilled the entire law of what we know in the Old Testament. That would include the tithe. Okay? So after his death, Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. The New Testament nowhere, listen to me carefully, nowhere commands or even recommends that Christians submit to a legalistic tithe or tithing system. 
So the, we have no command to do so. We have no recommendation to do so in the New Testament. And we don't have, and neither do we have an abolition of it, okay? And we're not told not to do it. Okay? But what is the overriding principle in the New Testament? Because you have to remember, you have to remember that we're responding to a major, major question here, okay? And that is, what does the Bible say about Christian tithing should a Christian tithe, okay? And the truth is that the, the Christian tithing does not exist. It doesn't exist. Now, the New Testament, okay, so nowhere designates a percentage. The New, nowhere in the New Testament does it designate a percentage of income a person should set aside, but only says gifts should be key in keeping with income. That's all it says. But let me show you this. Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. It says, On the first day of every week, each of you is to put aside and save as he has proper, uh, as he has prospered, so that no collections need to be made when I come. Now, re read that verse again. On the first day of every week, that would be for us the Sunday, each of you is to put aside and have and save as he may prosper. So that has to be something in your heart, right? So the gift should be in keeping with your income. And whatever that income happens to be, you're going to take and you're going to draw out of that thing and you're going to give some kind of an offering, a gift. Right? But, it, but we have no way does it call for a tithe in the New Testament. So some in the Christian church, this is what they've done. They have taken the 10% figure from the Old Testament tithe and applied it as a recommended minimum for the Christians in their giving. So that's what they do. Okay, we don't have it in the, in the New Testament, but this is the Old Testament. So we should at least give that much. And that's how they teach that often, okay? Yet we have no explicit verse in the Bible, okay, or even implicit, okay, that tells us to do that. But that's what they choose to teach in many churches, okay? Now, although, let me see if I put it this way. Although no tithe is demanded of the Christian. Listen to me. Although no tithe is demanded of the Christian in the New Testament, in the New Testament talks about the importance and the benefits of giving. The importance and the benefits of giving. We are to give as we are able. We are to give as we are able. This is crucial for us to understand. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that means giving more than 10%. And sometimes that may mean giving less than 10%. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the ability of the Christian and the needs of the body of Christ. Turn your Bibles to the book of James. And I want you to see this in the book of James, please. Okay, Because every Christian should, should be diligently praying and seek God's wisdom in the matter. You should. Lord, you know, you, you, I sit down with my wife and I say, okay, Lord, what should we give? God will answer you. Okay? He will answer you. He does answer you. And you have to seek God's wisdom. Don't allow any church and don't allow any pastor or any member of that church to manipulate you to give what you're not ready to give. Or you don't want to give. Because it, see, it has, to, it has to be born in your heart what to give. Now, I ask you to turn your Bible to James. Go to James chapter 1 verse 5. James chapter 1 verse 5. If you don't know what to do, ask God. Don't ask the man of God. Don't ask the preacher. Don't ask the church. Ask God. God will talk to you. And here we have in James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Ask God. He will tell you what to do. Now, finally, above all, offerings which is not a tithe, should be given with pure motives. It should be given with pure motives and an attitude of worship to God, a worship of God, and his service to the body of Christ. That's how you should give. Right? Let, me, let me show this. Let me, let me close this with this idea. Open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. And it says this. Each one all of us as believers, must do just as he decided in his heart. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Nobody can, nobody can impose upon you 
how and what to give. That has to come from your heart after you've consulted and spoken directly with God.